Hello and welcome. When we have a control system as shown with several feedback loops, there are several ways to simplify it. We can use Mason's gain flow formula or we can use block diagram reduction or we can use simple algebra. In this particular video, we're just going to use algebra. Looking at the diagram as shown, we can name several more points as shown in white. There is no particular significance to the choice of letters, but the choice of naming which actual signals we're naming has been carefully chosen as you will see in a moment. We have something basically at the beginning of all the blocks. The ES is at the beginning of the K block. The WS is at the beginning of the G, H, G1, H2, and H3 block. And it separates the two decisions. The A is at the beginning of the G2 block and the Z is at the beginning of the 1 over S block. So let's take the Z first, and let's relate the Z to the Y. But before we do that, we are going to realize that we can omit writing the brackets with the S next to all the variables since the entire problem is in the Laplace domain and it will be it will make the algebra look more confusing so having said that what we have done now is we have write, written y in terms of z the z passes through the one divided by s function to become the y so all of these lines in the diagram are actually signals and they're also variables in the algebra. And what's inside the boxes is functions that operate on the variables. So y and z would be variable and the one over s would be the function. So the z is the input to the one over s and the y becomes the output. But we can treat it as a simple algebra expression and we can make Z the subject. We just multiply by S on both sides and we have Z equal to SY. Now the next thing we're going to look at is the Y, but we, this time we're going to write it in terms of the A. Now the A passes through the G2 block as well as the 1 over S block. And we are going to ignore the Z in this as if it wasn't there. And we are going to say that Y is 1 over S times G2 A. We can do that because when two blocks have nothing between them, you can join them together to become one block. So we actually have those two blocks becoming one block, G2 over S. So that's what we do to A in order to get it into Y. And once we have done that, we can now make A the subject of the expression. So we simply multiply by the S and divide by the G2. And lo and behold, the A is isolated and has become the subject. Now, before we move on to put it all together, we are going to write some simple equations for E and W as well. E, if you study it, is just R minus Y. Look at that. The Y comes right away back around to that circle that decision block uh, where we perform a simple summing operation. The plus or the minus next to each circle is actually 
what happens in the algebra. So those circles are actually summing blocks that sum signals together. Not decision blocks, summing blocks. Okay, so the E signal there going into the K is just R minus Y. And likewise, if we look at the W, we can say that the W is K times the E signal minus Z times the H1 signal. Okay, so H1 is a function, Z is a variable, E is a variable, and K is a function. Okay, but K is just a scaling uh, gain factor, basically. Once we see K there in the block, that's just basically multiplying the E by the K. And K is usually just a number. Whereas H and Z, sorry, H and G, H and G, the H and G blocks, they can be complete functions in themselves. They may not simply be replaced by numbers in most cases. So, what are we going to do next? We are going to write an expression for A that includes Z and W. So now we look here and we look backwards towards the W and we see that the A is G1 times whatever happens at that summing block. And at that summing block, we have minus H2Z and we have minus H3A, and we have plus W. So examine your diagram there, and you will see that that is actually what we have. So the next step now is to substitute that A into the equation above for Y. Put that A in there, and write an equation. So can you see that what we've done? We have, that is A, and that is W. So we're gaining ground. But when we look at our expression for W, we have in Z, A, sorry, when we look at our expression for Y, we have in Z, A, and W. Z, A, and W. We need to gradually get them out because ultimately our expression for Y must only contain G's, H's, K, and of course R. So we don't want the white variables that we've created, E, W, A, and Z, to exist in the final answer. We want Y equal to something times R. Y equal to the transfer function times R is what we want to end up in. So we're going to have to get rid of those uh, letters Z, A, and W. That's what we have to do next. So we identify what we're going to substitute them with. For Z, we're going to substitute SY. And for A, we're going to substitute SY over G2. So that is done in the next line. And what we want to do is now we want to multiply out those brackets completely. And notice when we've multiplied out the brackets, what happens in the term underlined in blue? We get canceling occurring that remove the S and the G2 from that particular term of the expression. So you can assure yourself of how the algebra is progressing and you can look at the formula there and you can realize that the only other thing we have to get rid of is W. So we're going to substitute the KE minus H1Z in place of the W. Okay, so what you're seeing now is 
we have done that and we have brought back the E and the Z onto this page. Why? Because after we substitute for the W, what is left in the brackets, we still have the E and the Z to get rid of. If we can get rid of those E and Z there, then we will actually have R and Y in their place because Z is just SY and E is just R minus Y. So by getting rid of our E and our Z, we will have exactly what we want. So we're going to do that now. And there is the substitution. We've dropped in the SY in place of the Z, and we've dropped in the R minus Y in place of the E. So once again, we are going to expand and get rid of the brackets. And then we have a lot of terms. We have one, two, three, four, five terms there. Quite a few of them contain Y and only one contains R. Do you see that? So what we want to do now is we want to gather up the ones that include Y and separate them from the R. But before we do that, we want to see that, we want you to see that in the last term, the S is canceled out, just as it did on the other page before. So now we've gathered them all up so that we have Y times a whole big something, and then we have one other term, which is R times something. So the last thing that we want to do is to bring the R under the Y But before we can do that, we have to get rid of the Y on both sides. So what we want to do is we want to move the bracketed expression that's multiplied by Y over to the side with the Y. So in order to do that, we need to expand that again. But before we expand that, we're just going to show you, so in case you can't figure it out, where the terms have ended up. And uh, that shows you that where the Y's came from. Four of them had the Y's and the, the yellow indicates it. But unfortunately, we need to multiply out that Y again. Why do we need to do that? Because we have to bring those terms over to the Y. And we have done it in this line. As you can see, the equal sign has moved down now so that we can separate the R's from the Y's. We added each of those Y terms over to the other side. So all the minus signs have changed to plus signs because each of the minus sign terms have been moved over to the other side. And when we look at this, we can easily now extract the Y. And that's why we get the one. Because when we extract the Y there, we have a one and everything then in the brackets is a plus term. So now we're in a good position to do what we wanted to do because we can bring the R round under the Y by division and we can also do another division and bring that entire long bracket on the left under what's on the right. So let us do that now. We need a new page to do it on. And we've done it there now. And uh, just in case you don't see it, there is the R going under the Y. And there is the bracketed part going under the other part. Thanks for watching the Stephen Mendes channel. And we hope this video has helped you and you will watch some more. See you in the next video.